What's up YouTube? Sake one here with an update video on my 75 gallon reef tank and also my Chado lighting project. Um, first things first, let's get into some updates. I know I said in my last video that I probably was going to wait for a while before I added any more livestock. Well, like I also said, I'm an impulsive buyer. So the first thing you'll notice is I had to get something to fix my algae problem. So I went ahead and picked up the fox face here. He, uh, likes to display his poisonous spines from time to time, especially when he's being videotaped. Um, all in all, he's doing a pretty good job. I don't think he's going to be enough to combat my green hair algae alone, but he is doing a great job. I think in the future, within the next couple months, I'm going to pick up a bristle tooth tang, and that should probably complete my green hair algae. Um, as far as coral additions, I went ahead and hooked up with my uh, local fish store guy and he wound up inviting me to his house and he had about 30 different tanks for me to choose corals from so I went a little bit nuts and picked up um, quite a few frags not as many as I wanted to get but uh, still got some really good good ones I got this uh, Montipora here it's got these bright orange polyps it's really really beautiful and then over here I picked up this very lovely purple bird's nest, which is great when I was moving it. Broke off about four or five branches and uh, made a bunch of frags. So I'm going to grow those out, take those to my fish store, and probably wind up trading them in for credit. I also went ahead and talked him out of this very tiny piece of Jason Fox Red Hot Satosa can't really see it very good under this light but it is very vibrant pink glowing it's very nice and I also got a couple more zoanthids from my zoanthid garden these guys right here are kind of bluish can't really see them very well camera's not focusing and then up in the back there I got these guys little pinkies they haven't quite opened up very well and then I got these I believe they're toxic green or atomic green pallies. I had some, uh, I ran another experiment with my uh, two-part dosing system during the last week or so. I decided to test and see if uh, I could use my alkalinity to just control my pH because I was starting to have some good swings again. So I thought, well, I'll set my alkalinity pump through my reef keeper to come on when my pH drops below 8.2. And that worked for about two or three days. My pH was in check and my alkalinity was pretty level at about um, 10 dKH. And then the third day it kind of went haywire and my alkalinity spiked up to about 15. So um, I did a water change. And I don't know what happened after I did the water change. I noticed that my calcium then spiked and was way over 500. So I had to do another water change to kind of get my parameters back in line. And on top of that, the pump on my skimmer broke, my reef octopus. So I've been without a skimmer for about, I think, seven days now. I ordered a pump from Aqua Cave. Turns out it was the wrong size. So I had to return that. I got another one coming, should be here in two days. All said, I think I'll have been without a skimmer for nine days. But since I added the fox face there, he has added a huge bio load to my tank. That guy drops some big logs all the time. As a result, all my nutrients are pretty high within the tank. And you can see some of my corals, like this Acropora here. It's kind of turned that fleshy brown. And as well as this guy here is not as vibrant and green as he used to be. Um, could be a combination of my two-part dosing system going out of whack. As well as, um, I forgot to mention, during my experiment phase, I turned off my auto top-off pump when I was taking apart my protein skimmer. And I never turned it back on. So for a day, it was off and my salinity shot up to about 1.028 which also had a pretty awesome effect on the tank. So all in all, I've experienced just about every newbie mistake you can make. And I guess they're right when they say that uh, the more gallons of water you have, the more forgiving your system is because everything still seems to be alive. Um, although it's not thriving as much as it always was, you can see 
my uh, Cypestrea down here, also a little bit brown. He's not as happy as he once was. Let's see if I can focus in on him a little bit. Yeah, and then my frog spawn. You can also see kind of a tint of brown to him. Not as vibrant and glowing green as he was. See that war coral behind him is the one I bleached. I tried to show that earlier. I moved him. Now you can really see right there on that upper right hand section real whiteness. I lowered my lights back down a little bit. I'll do another video on that once I find the right parameters again. But a couple things bleached, so I just dropped the lights down, moved what bleached down. And I'm going to go through the process again until I try to find the right balance. So moving on to my Chato project, I took, uh, like I said, five day samples of everything with the two different lights. You can see now that I have quite a bit more. So I did get some significant growth. And um, without further ado, I'll go into the pictures of the Chato and... Uh, Go through that experiment and show you what my findings are. So these are the two lights that I decided to go with for my Chato experiment. And I apologize, I threw the box away for the LED light, but um, this is it. I don't know if it'll focus in on any of the details here. Probably not. That's way too small to be able to read. But um, this is a 5,000 Kelvin light uh, that I got from Home Depot. I think it was about $36. Um, I think it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 LED lights in a focused area. And it uh, doesn't get very hot. Uh, produced really good for me over the five-day period. And um, like I said, I threw the box away, but... Uh, Again, 5,000 Kelvin, and I was looking for a 5,100 rated, but this was all they had at Home Depot. And then for the compact fluorescent bulb was this 6,500 Kelvin bulb. And uh, I was using those cheap Marineland LEDs, but uh, I wasn't getting good growth. And then I went to um, my fish store guy's house and saw his setup and on one of his tanks he was using those marine land leds and his chato was growing supremely however he had it pretty much touching the chato and mine was about six inches off the top of it also i noticed with the marine land led lights with that spectrum i was getting red slime in my tank which i no longer have after switching to these two bulbs for the uh, 10-day trial so um that's that. So this is day one with the uh, LED bulb. You can see where the circle is, is where some of my Chato was dying off. And that red line between the standpipe and the rock was pretty much what I used for the measure of growth with the LED bulb. So those are the two areas that I kept an eye on throughout these five days. Uh, day two, not a whole lot going on, but you can see a little bit of growth between the standpipe and the rock. By day three, Definitely see some growth between the standpipe and the rock and things are getting quite a bit greener. Day four, almost touching the rock under the standpipe and we're starting to fluff up a bit. And then day five, completely touching the standpipe rock and very fluffy and a lot more green. So this was day one with the compact fluorescent bulb. <coughs> Excuse me. And... What I used for the measure of growth here was those two little black areas where my heaters were. I wanted to see how much of that got covered up over this five day period with the compact fluorescence. So by day two, it looks like there's a little bit of growth, but it's hard to tell because I think I messed up the angle of the camera on that one. Day three, you can see not a whole lot going on. Things are looking fairly green, but not a lot of outgrowth. Day four, still, you can see the black of the heaters and not a whole lot going on. Day five, still, you can see the black of the heaters and uh, not a lot of growth overall. So I think what I've determined throughout this entire process is that the 5,000 Kelvin LED bulb gave me significantly higher growth rates. Again, nothing changed over this period of time. My skimmer actually went out on the last day that I took the picture. So everything was the same. Um, I did add the Fox face during this time 
but he was there for the entire time so he was creating bio load for the nutrients to support the growth of the chato for the whole time so overall i would say go with the led light if you can afford it, it's 30 bucks if not i believe a 5000 kelvin rated bulb gave me better growth over the 6500k rated bulb so that's it for now uh thanks for watching and like always if i'm doing something wrong or you see something i can do better please let me know Thank you.